Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Norbert Monacani. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome to this celebration, wherever you are, as we celebrate the 17th week in ordinary time. Dear friends, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and lead us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, protector to of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, Nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, 
Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, how I love your law. O Lord, how I love your law. I have said, O Lord, my portion is to obey your words. The law from your mouth means more to me than large quantities of silver and gold. O Lord, Lord, how I love love your law. Let your merciful love console me. By your promise to your servant, show me compassion that I may live, for your law is my delight. O Lord, Lord, how I love love your law. That is why I love your commands more than the finest gold, why I rule my life by your precepts and hate false ways. O O Lord, Lord, how I love love your law. Your decrees are wonderful indeed, therefore my soul obeys them. The unfolding of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. O O Lord, Lord, how I love you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, we know that in everything God works for good with those who love him who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net, which was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down, and sorted the good good into vessels, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you understood this, they say to him, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord 
one of the reasons that makes us fully human is the ability to make choices in life, the gift of free will. But as we know, we do not always make right choices in life. We need to ask for the grace of discernment as Solomon did in the first reading. Many rulers would have selfishly asked for wealth, for fame, for reign, for victory over their enemies. But Solomon asked for what was necessary from God, an understanding and an understanding mind to discern between good and evil. That is wisdom. So that he might wisely govern and lead the people of God who were entrusted to him. For he knew that without this wisdom, without this understanding, he will not be able to discern the will of God in his life. Wisdom helps us to prioritize things in our lives. Without understanding God's will, we cannot fulfill it. Because Solomon knew what to ask for and made the right choice, God granted him his desire. God gave him wisdom, and through the exercise of wisdom, Solomon was able to receive other gifts, including the riches, the expansion of his kingdom, the long term of his reign, and the suppression of his enemies. Solomon received the gift of wisdom at that time, but it took many years and a lot of hard work to see the fullness of God's plan in his life. Yet the gift of wisdom helped him to wait patiently for that fulfillment of God's promises. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us about wisdom we possess if we start to understand God's plan in the midst of our suffering. The reading states about the wisdom of understanding that God can make good flow from the worst situations in which we find ourselves. Because he loves us and will make things work out for our good. That is the good as God sees it. When we receive God's wisdom, our eyes begin to see the graciousness and mercy of God at work in calling us to himself, justifying us and glorifying us as well. We begin to see the eternal mystery in the indescribable love of God in our lives. In our gospel today, Jesus relates three parables. Each of them speaks about the prize of being a part of God's kingdom, a part of God's reign. It takes wisdom and costly choices on the part of those who want to be part of that kingdom. It means giving up all other values in order to be part of God's kingdom, to be part of God's divine plan. To put it in context, the parable of this man who goes on and hides this pearl or this treasure originates from the Jewish law, from the Hebrew law. It was very common in the days of Jesus that people hid their riches deep in the ground. The man presented today in the parable did not own the field, but he found an old treasure, which means he found this treasure in somebody else's field. But then the law, the Hebrew law says, if it's not in your field, whatever you found belongs to the other person. It belongs to the owner of the field. Therefore, you have to turn it in. So what happens with this man? He hides this treasure somewhere else. And he goes and he sells everything that he has and he buys this field, which he knew it had this treasure in it. This is a great story. Jesus doesn't comment on the dishonesty of the man 
or what's in his mind. He wants us to focus our attention on the good fortune that this man stumbles on. What is relevant though to this story is the wonder of the fact that he looked at something he found as a treasure and made a choice to lay his life down for it, to sacrifice everything that he had for it. The kingdom of God in our lives is both demanding and rewarding. It is not something which comes easy or without a price. If we really want to be part of God's plan, to be part of God's divine plan, to be part of God's kingdom, it means we need wisdom. That wisdom will lead us to make right choices. Wisdom will also help us to have this bigger picture. Sometimes we get caught up with little pictures that we fail to see God's wisdom and God's plan in action. We focus on our own sufferings and problems and do not see that God is at work even in and especially during those difficult times in our lives. God loves us and wants us to be part of his divine plan. Even when we are tempted to sell out our lives for pleasures, God promises us a rich reward in his kingdom. Our experiences during this pandemic has shown us examples of how people can seek their own pleasures rather than the common good. Some have lost patience completely and ignored the precautionary measures advised by experts and becoming negligent in spreading the virus. Others have taken this opportunity as a way of enriching themselves at the expense of the poor. Jesus today says, it takes a full commitment on our part. We must be willing to give up all the things that we hold as valuable in order to buy into this treasure beyond all other treasures. It means that in the face of difficulties, we have to fully trust in the Lord, believing that God will make everything turn out right in the end. It also means we have to make the right choices and be patient in order to see the fulfillment of God's plan. As we journey through these trying times of life, we are tempted to say, God, give it to me now. I can't wait. That attitude manifests our selfish personal desires. That's when we need wisdom and patience, two attitudes which allow us to look beyond our personal selfish desires and see God and others and how we interact with them. That is when the kingdom of God begins in our life. So the message in today's readings is that God loves us. He is offering us a share in his kingdom. The kingdom of God is God's reign in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, in our society, and in our world. Only those who develop a searching mind and a heart, willing to give up everything for the great treasure of God's kingdom will be rewarded. We must be willing to choose the correct path. We need God's wisdom. We need to make sacrifices and maybe even suffer knowing that God will make all those difficulties well worth our suffering. God has a plan and we will make it work out if we are willing to be wise and patient. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now present our prayers and petitions to the Lord. Dear friends, in story after story, Jesus made known the mystery of God's dream for the world. Let us pray for the whole of creation to welcome God's rule. We pray for all nations that God will raise up leaders for them who honor wisdom, discernment, and right judgment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all whose lives are aimless and empty, that the Spirit of God will stir them to search for the treasure that is the reign of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the children, women, and men who are victims of abuse, that they may be set free from their bondage and find help they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are working on the front line during this pandemic, that they may receive full support from all of us and from the governments. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have been called to do extraordinary things to keep our community safe, that their generosity, creativity, and courage will, fully, will be fully appreciated. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for those whose family life, partnerships, or friendships have been enriched in the course of the pandemic and pray for their continued flourishing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the recently deceased and those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time that they will inherit the glory of the children of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of eternal love, you have set your heart on us and called us to glory. Keep us true to the love you have shown us in Jesus, your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Yes. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And the Lord will set his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good and good and good. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Booty and Duncan our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I want to that you should enter under my room, that when you say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, our Mass is ended. Thanks to God.